Oh, it's too cool. Going over to the big one. You guys petting the petting it? Fire! Oh, he's trying to. Oh, hey there. Hey, yeah. Sit down. Hey. The turtle. Oh, that one over there is eating. Hey there. So cool. It's a yellow-tailed creepo. Now, most people not familiar with snakes think that they're cold-blooded and slimy. Like all reptiles, they are cold-blooded, but all that means is that they're the same temperature as their surroundings, not necessarily that they're cold to the touch. As for being slimy, there's no reason for the snake to be slimy, so they're not. Some snakes have small, smooth scales that at a distance and in the right lighting appear slimy, while others have rough ridges down the center of their scales that are abrasive to the touch. Now, you may notice him sticking out his tongue. He's not being rude. This is how the snake smells. All snakes and many lizards will stick out their tongue. Their tongue collects particles that are in the air, and then they bring it back into their mouth and into an organ in the upper jaw called the Jamison's organ. Jacobson's organ. And as a rule, the snake will trust his sense of smell over anything else, particularly when it comes to food. I already learned this in biology. A couple years ago, a couple years ago we had a handler that was cleaning cages and feeding, and he just happened to spill the bucket of fish that he was feeding on the floor. Cleaned it all up, got rid of all the food and stuff. However, the smell was still there, the snake found it, he went to where it was spilled. Yeah. Yep, it's a constrictor. <laughs> or it's a swallower holer. If it wraps around him, then yeah, it's a constrictor. <laughs> Alright, most people when they first see the snake think boa constrictor, however this is a Burmese python native to Southeast Asia. This snake uses constriction to kill its prey. Yep. Now, when you're talking about the boa constrictor, although the boa is a large snake, it's not one of the true giants of the snake world. The true giants are the anaconda of South America, which can grow up 25 feet, 300 pounds. And then the reticulated python of Southeast Asia, which can grow up to an excess of 30 feet. Now, how this guy kills, he finds whatever he's going to eat. Ready? Now, this snake doesn't have the true ability to inject its venom. Instead, it has to grab hold of whatever it's trying to eat, work it towards the back of the mouth where the fangs are, and then just wait for the venom to run down the fangs and into the wound. It's easy to think how venom came about when you think that even the most potent venom was just a form of saliva. Eventually, it developed toxins to help you kill, as well as aid in digestion. Now, most rear fang snakes are harmless to something the size of a human. However, there are exceptions. There are a couple snakes, rear fangs, that can kill people. Two of them are boomslang and bird snakes. There is a boomslang on display. Now, up until about a week ago, we used to think that this guy. basically in nature. Basically, it, it's letting everything know beforehand that it's a bad dude. It's gonna mess you up if you get in a fight with it. Now, this snake doesn't always have permanently erect fangs like in a lapid would. Instead, it's either basically on a hinge system. When he closes his mouth, they fold up to the roof of the mouth. If they stayed permanently erect all the time, they'd stick out through his jaw. The snake can actually open its mouth so wide they just see them practically in front of him, so he doesn't actually have to bite down on you to inject his venom. All he has to do is strike, gets even the tip of his fangs in, injects the venom, 
gives away. It's the best method with the least risk to the snake. <laughs> now, cottonmouths do get a bad reputation as a vicious snake. Um, we've actually gotten stories, people are out on the lake or something, cottonmouth sees them from the other side of the lake, swims over, they leave, it follows, they drive down the highway, it's still following right behind them at 30 miles an hour. They get home, it waits on the porch for four days for them to come out. No, that's true. They actually won't follow you. No snake will actually follow you. Um, This is an Asian cobra, or a monocle cobra. It gets the monocle because it has one single circle on its neck. Now, the most known feature is its hood. All its hood is, is basically its defensive mechanism. When he's scared or frightened, nervous, he'll hood up and basically try to look bigger than he is. He'll try to scare off whatever is scaring him, basically. Um, most people, when they first see the snake, think of the snake charmer, with the snake coming out, moving to the rhythm of the music. It's not true, snakes have no external ears, so he's actually moving with the snake charmer. Now, the snake has a relatively slow strike comparatively, if you compare it to a rattlesnake or something. It's a forward, downward motion. Honestly, a alert person can get up here, take him out of the box, get in striking distance, and still dodge it. I don't demonstrate that. <laughs> I don't get paid. Anymore. That's why he stays in the box. <laughs> That's why he stays in the box. It is the prairie rattlesnake. Now, the most known feature on the rattlesnake is its tail, its rattles. <laughs> most people think that if you count the segments on the tail of the rattle, that you get the age of the snake. That's not true. All you get when you count it is how many segments there were when you counted. <laughs> so, if you want to know the age of the snake, you have to find out when it was born. The tail does add segments every time the snake sheds. He adds one to six times, or will shed one to six times a year. New segments added every time. See, it's black. Oh. Big snake, big snake. 
big, big, big snake. I see you. Burmese and that's an albino Burmese. I didn't even, I remember seeing those as a little kid, but I didn't even think they really like existed. And this is a tree monitor. See how fast this little guy's moving? Rambunctious fella. Oh, here's a black mamba. like very venomous. One hundred percent of black mamba bites are fatal. I'll believe that. A forest cobra. Oh look at this, a West African green mamba. It's like all the mambas are venomous. And this is a boom slang. And apparently this is the, it says it's the most seriously venomous rear fanged snake in the world. King Cobra. show is that people who go after rattlesnakes they tend to be anywhere from around 16 to 23 years old and they're mostly male because when a female goes into a hospital usually when they're bitten they're bitten like on the ankle right there there's my ankle okay but usually like when a male goes in they usually have it like on their hands and on their face and most of the time alcohol is part of it the re part of where why the males get bit all over their face and hands <laughs> Here's an iguana. Oh my gosh, it looks like Emmett. I miss Emmett. Hey, Katie Bug. <laughs> 